In this video, I'll show you how to turn a photo into a triptych, which is a picture on three panels, using shapes and a clipping mask in Adobe Photoshop. With an image already open in Photoshop, let's begin by checking its size. Go up to Image, and then click on Image Size. In this panel, make sure that this chain is linked so that when you adjust the width, the height will adjust automatically. And I know that if I want to print this out, I want it to be within the eight and a half by 11 range. So I'll choose that size here. And I definitely suggest increasing the resolution to 300 unless you need to have a small file size for some reason, and then click okay. Back in the main workspace, the image is a little too large now. So you can come down to the bottom left and adjust it with the percentage, or you can click on control or command and the zero key on your keyboard and it fits the image to your screen. I want to diverge for a moment and show you a fun new feature in Photoshop. This photo of Half Dome is pretty nice, but the sky's a little bland. So I'm going to go to Edit and find Sky Replacement. And this panel opens up and you'll see that it's automatically changed the sky. And here you can make adjustments. And in this drop down, you'll see a lot more choices of different types of skies. Now I'll admit that this does feel a little bit like cheating and I wouldn't feel right submitting something like this to a competition, but for private use, I think it's just fine. In my layers panel, since I added the sky, I now have a background copy of my image along with the original. To make things simpler, I'm gonna unlock the original image by clicking on the lock here and you'll see that it changed it to layer zero. And with it selected, I'll go to the bottom right corner and click the trash can and say yes to delete that extra layer. Now let's get back on track. Come over to your toolbar and click on the crop tool. And then up in the options bar, if you click on the drop down for ratio, you'll see a lot of preset sizes for your crop. But if you just leave it on ratio and then make sure the next two boxes are empty, you can free transform your crop to any shape you'd like. You can also use the straightening tool if anything in your image looks crooked, but I wanna show you the overlay options. Click on rule of thirds in the drop down, and now click on the bounding box outside your photo and you'll see this grid. Look at how the features in your photograph are placed within your picture plane. We're gonna be using three panels, so make sure your focal points are within these three columns and crop if needed. In the option bar, you can either accept the crop, cancel the crop, or reset the crop tool and I'll go ahead and accept this crop. Next, click on View, and then go down to New Guide Layout. In this panel, you don't want any rows, so if you have a number under rows, you can go ahead and remove it. But you do want three columns. I have my gutter set at a quarter of an inch, and this is gonna be the negative space between your different panels. And this can be as thin or as wide as you would like. And then down below for my margins, I have them set to the same size as my gutter for some unity. And margins are the outer edges around your image. Again, yours can be whatever you would like. And click OK. Then in your toolbar, find your shape tools and use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle from the top left corner to the bottom right in the first panel, paying attention to your guides. It's okay if your rectangle is a different color than mine, but if it bothers you, you can change it by going up and clicking on the fill color and choosing white and also having no stroke around it. We wanna duplicate that same rectangle two more times. So switch to the move tool and then click the rectangle and hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. And you can also hold the Shift key at the same time to make sure the second duplicated rectangle is in line with the original. Move it over to the center and then drop it. And then again, hit Alt or Option key, hold Shift to create the third copy and then drop it. You can also go to Edit Copy and Edit Paste as well if Alt or Option shortcuts don't work. Over in your layers panel, you'll now see that you have three rectangles. Hold the shift key to select all three at once, then right click, and we need to make them one shape by going down to merge shapes. Now all the rectangles are on one layer. If you haven't done so already, you'll wanna unlock the layer with the image by clicking on the little lock, 
Yours might be named something different from mine, which is fine. And then grab the image layer, click and hold, and move it above the rectangle layer and drop it. Then, with the image layer still selected, go over to Layer and click on Create Clipping Mask. Now you should have your triptych image. But notice the transparent canvas below shows through. Go over to Layer, New Fill Layer, and we'll add a solid color. When this box pops up, you can just click OK. And now you can choose a color for your background. Click OK, but notice that our new fill layer is on top in the Layers panel. So click, hold, and drag it to the very bottom of your Layers panel. Go up to View and clear your Canvas Guides. And to zoom out a tiny bit, you can click on Command or Control and the minus sign on your keyboard for the full effect. If you want to change the fill color for your background, you can double click on this first thumbnail and it will bring back up the color picker and you can change the background color to whatever you like. I'll show you a couple of other examples. Here, using three ellipses instead of rectangles with a different background fill color. Here, I used the polygon shape and I rotated the middle one upside down. And here, while it's not quite a triptych anymore, in the guide layout, I added two rows to make six boxes instead. I'll go ahead and clear those guides. And now I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer, and I'll pick Gradient instead. And in this panel, you can click the drop down box and you'll see a lot of other gradient choices. And of course, to see the full effect, I'll need to move that fill layer to the bottom of my layers panel and then click back in and play around with some more of the choices. You can also change things like the angle of the gradient, the style, etc. Finally, I want to show you how you can make adjustments to the photo and or to the shape mask. Let's start with the photo. So make sure your image layer is selected and then go up to edit and then down to free transform or you can click command or control T as the shortcut on your keyboard. Up pops up the bounding box for the photograph and you can click and adjust just the photo itself without affecting the mask. And to change the mask, make sure the shape layer is selected and again go up to edit, free transform or use the shortcut keys on your keyboard. The bounding box for the shapes pops up but remember we merged the shapes together so they will transform as one object. If you need to change the shapes individually, you'll have to go back in history and redo those steps. Lastly, we need to save our work. So I'll go back to my first tab and go to File, Save As, and I'll save it in my Creative Clouds files in a folder for this class. And you'll want to rename your file so that it doesn't copy over your original image. And I always do mine with my first name, last initial underscore the unit. And this is a triptych. The format will be Photoshop so that I can save my layers and make changes if I need to later. And then I want to put this on my web page. So I'll go to File, Save As. I'll keep the new name, but I'll change the format to a JPEG instead. Click Save and OK. And that is how you use shapes with a clipping mask to turn your image into a triptych using Adobe Photoshop.